Welcome, 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 welcome back to Maps. We're having some technical difficulties, but we're just going to go for it. to be zero zero point nine all right
Hello, hello, hello. Check, 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 check. Hello. Too late. I'm sorry. This is still very quiet. What's going on? We'll see. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, 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 hi. I have no idea of the levels, but we're going to figure it out. Uh, well, sometimes, sometimes things don't go quite as you uh, expect. <laughs> the background image. Uh, okay, so. I will, uh, first things first, um, something is wrong with my crow and I don't know what, and it basically meant I had to do everything live, I couldn't upload a script, it kept, uh, kept crashing. Anyway, so there was meant to be more to the performance and the background is actually a whole world. But seeing as you haven't seen any of it, maybe I should just save it. <clears throat> uh, we'll explore. We'll explore it as we go along. Um, cool. Hi. Hi. Hello. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been a while. It's been a while. We're back. It's maps. Uh, season two. Wow, I can hear every sound in this room right now. It's, it's a little distracting. Dr distracting myself.
Okay, uh, if there was questions in the in the chat, um, maybe shoot them off again, um, just because I don't want to be scrolling through half an hour of messages. Okay, um, yeah, so the idea for today, um, the, goal, the goal is to talk about, um, well, to, to use this idea of um, found shapes. So, I feel like you're mostly hearing my keyboard. <laughs> um, yeah, oh wow, you can barely see that. Let's, uh, let's move to a, a better location. I feel like this is going to be just as difficult to see. The dark side of the moon. Perfect. Uh, so, oh, T T one's just a. I just made some variables. Um, yeah. So I guess I mean we'll get into this stuff. Uh, so basically, today I wanted to talk about uh, sequence, and I wanted to talk about uh, how they interact with clocks. Um, and how between the two of them you can kind of make pretty instant uh, sequencer style things. Um, I, I guess I should walk through a little of what I did before. Um, can I not scroll? Oh, I guess I deleted the history somehow. <laughs> um, yeah, so where do we start? I guess uh, I'm going to reset my Perot just so that we're back in a, a clean place. But yeah, it basically, uh, with new, the new Crow 3, um, there's the, the two big things from my perspective are, are the clocks and sequins. There's, the new ASL stuff is interesting, but I'm not going to talk about that today. Um, but yeah, basically... Um, what I was doing essentially is taking like um, just like a standard, um, just a, a clock timing um, that's linked to the global tempo um, and inserting a note basically each time around or inserting a modulation or something like this. Um, so it's a little unwieldy to type in Druid, but the general idea is you have this function called clock.run, um, which really just gives you like it lets you write a program that can operate uh, in time. Whereas in a normal program, everything happens as close to instantaneously as possible. Um, inside of a, a clock.run, you can pause for an amount of time. And in the meantime, you know, Crow can be off doing other things. So uh, inside of clock.run, you basically just pass it a function. So it's, it's nicer to look at. Um, like this, if we say we're going to run a clock and we say like a, a time function, right? And then down here we can write our time function. And the classic thing is this while true do thing. And this basically means it'll run forever. This is more like a metro than anything. Um, and in here, you know, clock.sync. And then I was using uh, the width, the width synthesizer. So something like this, uh, play note, and then, you know, for now we can just say, um, this is, this first number is a pitch, uh, which is zero, which basically equates to middle C, um, and 0 0.9 is a voltage, so it's like 0.9 volts, it seems quite low, but because with synth is polyphonic, as you stack the voices on top of each other, uh, it very quickly gets a lot bigger than 0.9 volts, you know? Like, worst case, it's four times that, because with synth does four voices. Um, yeah, so we have this. I mean, th this would not be very interesting, right? This is just going to play... Uh, it's going to play the same note at the same volume um, every, every uh, clock beat. So, I think... Um, 
Wow, okay. Um, so I'm just going to transcribe that quickly. This is going to look very funky. Of course I missed something, yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, I don't have a name. How's the, uh, the synthesizer level? Let me know. Yeah, so uh, it's patched into, it's, we're going with sent into with delay. Um, and I'm basically just using that so I can do some like clock synchronized uh, delays. Um, the, like, that was actually an interesting thing, I can show that later, but basically if you've already set your clock tempo, you can just use that um, to really easily make synchronized uh, delay times. Um, that's the, the one that goes times 60 divided by, so 60 seconds, uh, because we're talking beats per minute. Um, So that'll, that's at 150 beats a minute. Um, and the, the thing with, with delay is like, that'll set basically the buffer length um, at whatever the current rate is. Um, so it's kind of like context dependent. The cool thing about that, it means you can, um, you can set it with time and then you can change it with rate and it'll be clock synchronized and because it's like a analog rep uh, recreation it'll do the pitch shift thing lots of fun um, so to make this is like the basic the make a note every every beat uh, that's the what this is doing this clock this it's essentially it's a metro, but like you can think of it as like the boringest sequence of all time. It has one value that repeats forever. Um, but one thing I've been doing, um, one thing I think is really interesting, is using sequence um, to make, to basically create automatic sequences. So we can make like a, like just an arpeggiator, right? Um, So this call here, sequence with a table of notes, that's just going to give, that, like, I was using that to kind of define melodies. Um, here it's just a scale, so it's going to sound more like an arpeggiator, um, but we can say, we'll give it a name, um, my S. Um, and once you've done that, Maybe it makes more sense to put it above. Put that below. That's it. We can replace this note value um, with a call to my sequence, and I'm I I like to write the sequence in uh, semitones uh, and with synth expect volts. So you just have to divide semitones by 12 to get to uh, the correct voltage level. Um, so that's what it would be. Um, again, I'm going to have to transcribe this, unfortunately. I wonder if it'll work now. Um, fingers crossed. No. the sound.
Oh no. <laughs> so I'm restarting it because this arrow is showing up and I can't figure out on the fly what's going on exactly. Uh, I've seen it before and I realized I forgot to fix the bug before 3.0, so uh, <laughs> uh, it might be a little strange. Um, but basically, we're going to do this thing. We could maybe simplify it by turning into a function. Anyway, uh, let's, we'll get there. Uh, basically, I'm just going to throw this together. Um, Still won't do it. Oh, at strong rest, it's just a text editor. Uh, this is sublime text, but you can you can use whatever you want. Ah, this is so frustrating. Um, I'm not even really sure how to approach it. Um, being strange because we have um, modulation happening on the delay, um, which I can set to zero. Cool, yeah, so I don't know what's happening here. I'm not really sure if it's something I can fix. Um, I'm going to try it one more time, just doing the whole thing in line. So I'm going to declare my sequence inside of the clock routine. So it's going to make it a little strange. Is that, and then we're going to sequence three. You're going to be very excited at what just got delivered, so all is well. I'm not sure if they're coming upstairs. Cool, so let's turn the delay all the way down. Most of the way. Um, yeah, so what you're hearing right now is just like an arpeggiator. Um, and we can modify that by changing parameters of that sequence. Um, I'm going to slow it down so it's a little more obvious. Uh, so this is another trick I was using, is just setting the tempo to the tempo divided by, like, divided by a number. Um, this is very much a teletype kind of way of changing parameters, I think. But it's nice how they kind of, it uh, feeds across. It 
So this my ass is like the se the sequence uh, instance. So we can keep changing it. Um, and so that's that's what I was doing in the um, in the performance is basically because in this case my s like mys it's um it's just a variable and well it's just a name right and that name can refer to anything currently it refers to that sequence that we defined inside of the clock routine but we could change it right and so one thing i did in the performance was saying like um basically capturing what was currently in it like this and so i'm just like making a copy of mys and putting it in mys1 it's not it doesn't actually copy anything but like it means that i can now use mys1 um to refer to the current sequence uh while changing my s so i can now um just insert a new sequence here um so you know, we'll do a diminished scale. Oh, diminished arpeggio. Um, but I can switch it back by just... Well, I, I actually want to save that, right? So, my dim is currently in my, so now I can set my back to my one. So you can do kind of cool stuff like that. I was doing that to change scales in different cases, uh, different situations. Um, yeah, and I mean, that was kind of, essentially the whole performance was based around this structure, right? Of having uh, a clock running on a, a timer um, and then inside of it doing one thing. Um, in the performance, I basically wrapped uh, this line. I gave it a function name so that I could change that function. Uh, so, you know, this could be called... Um, I think I called it NN. Um, and then here, I can just put that in. Similarly, um, in different cases, I was modifying also this clock sync with another sequence. So I think... One thing that's like not immediately obvious, because all the examples talk about uh, using sequence for notes uh, and melody and, and chord and harmony and stuff. Um, you can just as easily use it for uh, timing sequences. Uh, it, it maybe is awkward. I always feel like I never know how to type, how to like with text represent time. It's something that I would love to you know, keep working on. Um, into the future. Uh, but the idea is we could um, have like another one, we'll call it my T. Um, and in here, you know, we could do one, 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 which will mean like quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, and then like And then like two half notes, and so they're like divisions of a of a time unit. Um, we could use that, and then down in here, instead of this one, we just replace that with my t, and we call it. So every time you call a sequence object, it produces a note or a, a value, the next value. Um, so let's see if we can insert that. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to define it first. So this is going to do something interesting um, because when I redefine this clock, it's actually going to start running on top of uh, what's already happening. So now we have two happening at once and they're both doing a pretty similar thing. Um, you can get around this by naming your clocks. You can like, when I call this clock run, I can like 
save that into a variable. Um, but one thing you can do if you're stressing, you can just run clock cleanup and it basically turns everything off. And I can just run that new one. Let's make, I wanted to make a new, um, this is, <laughs> my variables is so stupidly named. Uh, I just want to make a, fun, a sequence that's a bit more interesting. Um, even if it's still basic, uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to extend it just a little bit. So you hear that rhythm now coming across, we can, we could change it. And so with sequence, you can like swap them out like I've been showing you, or you can replace them, like you can read them in place with this function called set table, and I can just redefine it. But the nice thing about this is it will like keep the playhead. So if it's at the third step, it'll stay at the third step, um, as long as there's three steps. You know. um, It's kind of funny. Um, so we can now, uh, rather than just running through the scale, we can step through it. We can kind of like hop two notes at a time. Yeah, like that. Yeah, okay, so that's that was basically the whole performance. It's just about around that and then manipulating some modulation parameters. Um, some of it by hand because I uh, didn't have like a text editor, so I couldn't like really structure my thoughts around like how to modulate certain things. Um, but, you know, uh, I, you make it work however you can. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, okay. Um, I know I just took a break, but I'm going to run downstairs and grab this thing, um, and I will be back, and then we can kind of do more like a workshop kind of vibe, if, um, people want to, if you have, like, specifics you want to talk about, about clocks and sequence, or about Crow 3.0 in general, um, but otherwise I'll just keep working through some examples, um, we'll try and build something interesting, and maybe I might, like, repatch the synth a little bit so that we can hopefully actually upload files to it and, and like do a proper performance a uh, proper like um like nicely coded things rather than having to type them out into druid um but we'll get there in a moment um yeah okay i'll be back in just a sec
I kind of love that there's no like super specific questions because it means I just get to ramble. <laughs> My favorite state of being. Ah, this background, we gotta, you might have to, to break through. Oh, no, that's so pretty though. Just totally illegible. <laughs> The stereo panning, so the patch, uh, I don't know if you can really see it, but basically I'm using Cold Mac as like a stereo spread kind of thing, and I'm using the, um, the high and the low bands out of Three Sisters uh, to go into left and right. And what that'll do is basically take two bandpass filters and with the, the survey control, um, you basically can swap them from left to right. But then this blue cable, it's a stack cable that comes to a, down to the output of with delay. It goes into the offset of cold Mac. And what that does is basically, uh, it mixes it equally into both left and right channel. Um, yeah. I, I think that, I think that is it. Okay, block, yes. You can sequence a sequence. What? Maybe, I'm not totally sure what you mean, but you can put them inside of them, each other. Um, so, what do we have? We have my S, right? That's what we're listening to. Um, so, if we go... How is this going to be nice, right? Um, this is like a... Major nine arpeggio. Oh, <laughs> right. Will it pick up? Oh, has it? Uh, it probably broke the, the clock. Nice. Let's see if we can find it. Cool. Try that. Yeah. So, when we redefine my S, it's, um, it's got, uh, it's always going to be a step one. So it means it's going to sequentially move through from left to right and then sequence, like, go back to the beginning. Um, so, what we might do I'm going to call that M9 I'm going to save that into major 9 oh, and I did it backwards damn <laughs> We can also make like a, a minor nine, um, which I'm gonna guess is this. I mean, let's make it a uh, make it an eleven. So we'll extend it with uh, the four. Seventeen. 
So I can swap this out. Oh, damn it. I'm so bad at this. I'm not used to writing just in Druid. It's um definitely throwing me off. Um, so... Okay, so this is interesting. I can I can swap them out by hand, right? I can basically I'm changing this Maya uh, variable, and I'm switching it between minor minor eleven and major nine, um, and that's great. But it'll restart at the beginning, and it's kind of like I have to do it by hand, um, and I, I don't want to like have to count everything. So instead, you can make a sequence. A sequence. The name, like, pronunciation is difficult. <laughs> um, but I can do it of those two things. But this is gonna, this might be a little strange. Let's listen to it. It's probably not obvious what's happening, but it's basically taking one note from either arpeggio. Uh, in an interspersed manner, which is obviously a little like it's not probably probably not what you want. So there's a number of ways around this. Um, so with sequence, you can do um, a bunch of like uh, method operations. You can chain method functions onto these uh, sequence. So here I'm gonna I'm gonna use one called all. I'm, I'll put it on both. Let's see if that fixes it. Finally, there you go. Um, I'm not sure if all's working correctly, but um, what's happening here is this this count operation. I'll, I write it out over here. So um, well, typically I would write it like this. Arpeggios, and then we can make like a, a meta sequencer basically. And I would usually chain these things in this context. So I would say I want a minor, a major nine chord, and I'm going to play it. I'm going to take 16 values, um, but only one at a time. Still, it the this meta thing has to be called 16 times and it'll give me the next note out of the major 9 sequence and then I can follow that with the minor 11 and I can take another 16. So that's the like... that's one way of doing like sequencing of melodies. Um, there's lots of different ones though, so that's... that's the one where you kind of have more concrete like this is a sequence, and I want to take 32 notes from it. And then this is a sequence, and I want to take, you know, 
14 notes from it, whatever. Um, we can still do operations on these arpeggios, so I can change the step size to be 2. So here we go, it's more like meandering. So one other really cool thing with sequence is you can um, you can kind of use it to do melodies that are not so um, precisely defined, right? So I'm gonna keep redefining my S, um, and here I'm gonna say let's make a. This will be weird, but we'll make a sequence. It sounds like tool. <laughs> so what's happening here is the first part of the sequence Again, I'm gonna write it out again. It's, I wish we didn't have to do this. So each time it plays, it's gonna take. It's gonna play zero, which is like the middle C, then an octave down, middle C, an octave down, middle C. And then that last note, it's basically going to cycle through this list here. So that's this is like one way to make like a, you know, it's essentially a really long sequence, um, but we've managed to express it in a very specific way, a very kind of tight way. Can you make the note sequence random? No. If you want to make a random note sequence, I would just generate a random number. Um, yeah, it doesn't have it. It's not built in. It's like I feel like sequence is more about trying to have like a very specific. Uh, it's it's more deliberate composition and less um, probabilistic. But you can do stuff that kind of verges on it, but you just have to be a bit more opinionated about what the values are going to be. Um, so, for example, there's another sequence um, feature uh, called every. So it's similar to count. So rather than saying, play this thing 16 times, we're going to say every third or fourth or fifth time you call it, give me a value. Otherwise, imagine I'm not here and go to the next thing. So, an example. Let's see.
Okay, so what's happening? Uh, we're doing this like fifth thing, four note cycle, but then every time it cycles through, we're gonna insert an extra note. Um, and so you can use this really interestingly to like, um, to basically keep phase offsetting um, your sequence. So if we had two running in parallel, um, this could be a nice way to kind of like have the two things happening and then gradually like shift them um, by just a little bit. Alternatively, um, what we could do is I think we can chain count onto here. I think. We'll find out. I should decrease this too. Right. So count four now is basically saying when we get to this like occasional sequence, give me four notes rather than just one. And because there's only one element in the sequence, it's just going to repeat that. But we could make it like a little uh, major minor tension thing. And I think in general, three, like, sometimes you have to think in weird numbers because like, if you have a, you want to have a four bar sequence, you have to think, oh, I actually want to insert this every third time because it's going to take up a bar. Those kind of things are like, you, you get a, a bit of a, um, an intuition for it over time. has something here. This is a good idea. Um, okay, so let's make a new a new sequence. Uh, and it's going to be... Let's do a... I mean, I always love a whole tone, so why not, why not go for it? Classic. Classic trend. Yeah, somebody hit my, my flash count. Uh, the crash count, rather. Hopefully I don't have to retype this whole thing. Alright, I'm, I'm over this uh, sound. We, have to, we, have, we need a new sound. <laughs> This doesn't sound like a whole tone scale. What's going on?
Right, so we take this sequence. Uh, I could chain on the end of here, but it's just gonna get messy. So let's just say, let's chain it onto my S directly. Um, first, I'm gonna save it into a, another variable. Um, I think this will still work. Let's check. Cool. Okay, so we're stepping through sequentially. Um, what we can do is we can put, rather than stepping by a number, we can step by a sequence. I'm just hoping that I kept this in the firmware. I'm not sure <laughs> it got dropped for some reason. Um, right, so if we go plus one, minus one, it, it'll either stay still or it'll oscillate between two, I'm not sure. Cool, okay, so we have sequence control of the step direction. But it's happening on every call, so it's gonna stick us in this situation. What one thing we could do is we could step forward by two and back by one. So it's like playing a scale in thirds. Like if we uh set table So it's going to play two octaves of a Lydian scale in thirds. <laughs> um, maybe not super interesting, but now we can change our step, right? So instead of up by two, back by one, why don't we go up by one, back by one? But I think, unfortunately, I have to do it a different way. Um, I'm gonna... This is dangerous. Because it was breaking things before. Let's try it, though. Okay, so, I just aliased the word sequence to the letter S. So it should make things a little tighter. Um, I don't know if this is the cleanest way to do this, but what I'm gonna do is wrap each of these values in its own sequence. Um, and that's gonna allow us to do some fun stuff. So I can, let's say, uh, how many notes are there? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, we're gonna go forward 16 counts and then we'll go back with eight counts. So it switches direction and then starts going forward again. It's a little unwieldy at some point, but this is interesting to me.
Okay, where can we go with this? <laughs> I think it's nice, but... Oh. One last thing that I was doing in the performance um, was clocking some uh, modulations of the span on Three Sisters. Which, I mean... It looks something like this. I don't, I don't think I... I did it, but basically you, you could do something like this. Um, inside of here we could say slew for like five seconds um, and then set it to a voltage. One thing I haven't really covered is um, with clocks you can you can use this function called sleep, uh, and that lets you do um, that lets you do time-based uh, delay. So here I'm going to use another sequence, um, but I get to just talk in terms of time, like seconds. Um, so I'm going to go take 2.5 seconds and then and then five seconds, and we'll just alternate. And then for the value, I want to alternate between three values, so let's say plus five, minus five, and zero. Um, just as something, right? That should do it. So now we transcribe. <laughs> Oh, I already did the alias. This wouldn't work. I'd have to put these three inside of here. But for us. 
this now, we can just do this. Whoa. If you've got stereo, um, you'll probably be hearing this, the stereo field kind of move around. Now that that's running, um, we can uh, change the slew time of the second output, uh, which is controlling span. Um, we can make it zero, and this will like hard shift. between the different values. Or like, a one second slew. Yeah. Alright, so how can we modify this sequence that we're listening to? I want to like, I feel like we want to take it somewhere, somewhere different to kind of tie things up. So, we kind of covered all the basics of sequence. Accent notes. Um, swamps things for the win. Got it. So I forgot. I was actually doing that in the performance too. Um, so the fourth output on Crow is attached to the width synth. I believe it's the curve control. It might be ramp. Um, they kind of they both like add harmonics. So I often don't really make a distinction. <laughs> Um, maybe that's bad of me. So, yeah, I was just having that set with like a... Some kind of... Huh? Uh, I guess the... it's already set kind of high. Maybe I was just using number one. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sequencing envelope shapes. Absolutely. Yeah, Dan's got it. So the accents are coming from uh, a modulation. It's the orange cable. Uh, output one. It's an, um, uh, an LFO, uh, which is timed to the current clock time. Um, if you change the clock time, it won't stay locked, but... Um, so it's two volts up, two volts down, and I think it's just that only the top little portion of it is strong. Um, and it just kind of like gets it. And the thing, so with, with synth, there's this interesting interplay between the ramp control and the frequency modulation amount, in that when you have more extreme ramp settings, you get a pitch shift, um, which is kind of atonal when you have a little bit of ramp, but if you go all the way, um, it becomes tonal again. Let's see if we can get um, more of it. I'm a little confused where where the settings are at right now, because um, usually I would have them set in like a function in the code script, but I've uh, I've misplaced it. Um, okay. So. The last thing we'll do, I want to try and do a chord thing. Um, okay, so check this out. We're gonna go... One of the cool things about sequence is the values... We talked about the values being uh, numbers for note names. We talked about the values being uh, like clock sync values, uh, seconds as well. Uh, Dan just talked about them being strings, but they can also be tables, right? So we're gonna use some shorthand. C1 is gonna be the first chord. And we're just gonna be really basic. Um, and we're gonna say, Too much to just do a triad. I can't. I can't allow it. Um, we'll do some kind of inversion. So this is like a major, uh, major Lydian something. Then we'll make another one. Um, let's say so fourth. Put a base note under this. Um, minus three. Something. And then something kind of suspended. So I'm going to transcribe that. Uh, so one, uh, one really cool thing uh, with with synth is. Basically, the note stealing will allow me to play a four note chord, and when this the melody that's currently playing wants to play a new tone, um, it will just kind of steal one of the currently playing notes. So it means I can still sequence a full four note chord. And what I'm going to do is imagine I have a function 
um, so like receive chord. It's going to take a chord, and it's just going to say four. We can do it this way. Uh, this is like the very Lua way of sequencing over a table. Uh, for KV in I pairs of chord, do I I with synth play note um, value divided by twelve set. I think that's it. Got it. Okay, so let's try it.
That seems like a nice place to end.